This is Kevin Woodbury for Twin Sons Tutorials. Today I'm going to do a very quick um, demonstration on the adjustment brush within Lightroom 5. And uh, the adjustment brush, for those who may not be familiar with it, is located here at the uh, top of the menu within uh, Lightroom on the right side. And what it allows me to do is selectively make changes to the image in front of you. Now, in the past, you could make global changes, um, which would impact the entire image. But up until recent versions of Lightroom, you, you couldn't make selective changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the sky a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit darker um, and leave the foreground as light as it is. Now, that may not be an ideal image, but, but I want to show you that you can do it. So. The adjustment brush again is up at the top here on the right and if I click on this notice all of a sudden I get a, a new menu up here and this menu um, has all the normal controls for exposure and sharpness and the noise and such and what I want to do is with that now open I'm gonna click in my sky and I'm, I'm just gonna quickly click and leave it there but I want to bring my exposure down and I'm going to say I'm going to bring it down about there and watch what happens when I now start to paint with that brush look at the clouds notice I'm getting darker and I'm just going to go over the entire sky just quickly it may not be a perfect job but but it will show um, the tool or highlight the tool and again I'm not I'm not worried about being perfect here um, but notice now, if I think that's too much, I can change my exposure just by moving that, that slider, and it affects only the sky. Notice the foreground isn't changing. So um, I'm going to leave it at maybe minus 11 instead of the 29 that it was before. Now, anything I do within this palette will affect that area that I've selected. Um, so if I want to change for instance the tint of the sky I could change tint and make it more of a blue or make it more of a yellow I could put it back in the beginning and maybe make it a little bit of a greenish tint or purple tint but the other thing you can do with this sky too and again I'm gonna double click on these these um, sliders and that brings them back to center in case you didn't know that but I'm gonna go down here to color and notice what happens when I select blue. Notice all of a sudden the sky has turned quite a bit blue. I can move this around. I can make it more of a, a uh, green or a yellow. So you have the ability to color the sky as well. Um, and I'm going to leave that at that. Um, it may be a little bit too much, but I can change the saturation now by just reducing that saturation bar. Um, but notice that I've lost a lot of the colors um, that go along with the blue, so I'm going to actually leave it still here. And there's ways to fix that, but for now, this is a quick demonstration. Um, now, if I wanted to now go into the foreground and make some changes, I have to hit New right here, or any changes I make to the foreground will also be affected by the sky. So I want to say New, and what this allows me to do is create a whole new edit palette. I'm going to change the water. Um, so I'm going to click on the water, just leave it as is. I'm going to make this water a little bit on the blue side. And watch what happens now as I paint. Notice that blue, the water takes on a blue cast. And I can change that and make it far more blue if I'd like. Um, but I may actually want to change that to red um, because I want to reflect some of the colors from the sky maybe. Um, and so let's go over to the reds. Um, and again, this may be, be a lousy, uh, lousy choice of things to do, but I want to show you that you can selectively make these changes. Um, so now the water in the foreground has got some, uh, some uh, pinkish or reddish in it. Um, I can say new again and come over here and make this a little bit more blue. Uh, by clicking there and saying I want some blue I'm going to make it a darker blue and notice that the water in the foreground is still staying the red because I, I'm not selecting it um, and the new area that I'm painting is coming out blue 
again, these are not necessarily good examples of things you want to do, but, but they are things you can do. Notice when I'm adding blue to, to the yellow area, it doesn't come out actually as blue because it mixes the colors. So be aware that you're not going to necessarily get the color you want if it's in an area that has a strong color already. So um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say new again. And I want to make this grass a little bit darker. So I'm going to click on the grass, bring my exposure down to, who, say, minus, uh, minus 16, for argument's sake. And then I'm just going to go over the grass area where I want it to be a little bit darker. Um, maybe in the foreground here. And, and it may be too much, but, but again, um, I'll show you in a second. I can modify that if I do go too far. Um, so this is all, I'm getting all the grass, and, and you can change the size of your cursor by using the left bracket or the right bracket. The left bracket makes it smaller, the right bracket makes it bigger. Um, but say I went a little too far in terms of exposure, I can go back a little bit and I can go and raise that just a little bit, and that's pretty close to what it was originally. but. But that's okay. I just wanted to show you what, what you can do. Um, now, if I want to make an edit to an area that I've already um, changed, such as the sky, I can go back and click on that button, and that reselects the sky for me. I can take this, and I can bring it down to whites so that it neutralizes the blue a little bit in the sky, or I, I decide I want to make it more of a, a greenish sky. I can do that. So to make a change all you have to do is click on the dot that'll activate that area and you can make whatever changes you want if you want to get rid of it entirely click on it and drag it off screen um, okay or hit the delete key when you click on it there you go um, so if I can click on these um, and then hit the delete key it gets rid of them for me and my image is back to what it had been so I hope that's helpful to you. I hope that's uh, understandable. And uh, for Kevin Woodbury, this is Twin Suns Tutorials, and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.